Here we go. Want to start off with an English. Merlin, 46. Okay, he goes immediately for the counter with uh, c6, blunting the bishop, preparing d5. So in this position, I can transpose to a Botvinnik setup. And we have, yeah, I've, I've had this position <laughs> before in my over the board games because I have a opponent, a, a frequent opponent who plays this setup as black against uh, pretty much anything. <laughs> Ah, uh, let's see if he really wants to trade for that tonight. He does, okay. Got to open up a diagonal for my bishop. Looks like uh, I am not sure what the rook is doing on the C file. Uh, maybe he wants to play um, B5. I'll just uh, defend here. Let's. Uh, I think it's useful to get rid of this bishop. Okay, now if I play, you know, he plays b5 and I play C b3 to defend, it leaves this hanging. So let's defend it. I didn't want my uh, queen to be tied down defending here. Okay, I'll keep the center. And I thought it was interesting maybe to consider pushing the pawn, trying to take advantage of this. Okay, let's go here, trade this off. Yeah, so I'm kind of ignoring what he's doing here on the uh, on the queen side. Having gotten rid of that um, bishop, what's my next step? Push the pawn. Bring the knight out. I think. Um, okay, well, let's pause and look at what he's going to do. He's going to bring his rook here. I could lift my rook up to defend. Yeah, I think that's adequate. Let's continue over here. <laughs> he has to take a retreat. Oh, he can do that, huh? Okay, we'll take once and then bring the other rook up. Yeah, I don't think uh, these kind of strong arm tactics really work. So push the pawn here, hits the uh, knight, and hits this pawn. A bishop can take here. So 
he takes I take so put my queen here don't want to sacrifice the center pawn to just to win the C pawn but now I will play e5 he takes I can take back defended by the queen and this is hanging <clears throat> this knight doesn't have so many great squares to go to here it can go yeah anyway I will take here I guess anyway attacking the pinned knight pinning the knight and uh, oh, it's a uh, few steps there first. Oh, I see. Stepping there gains a tempo huh? and defends the um, pawn. Okay. Should have got my king out of that check before I played this line, looks like. Let's see, I guess he'll trade. He could play f5 right away. Oh, he did. I was going to say, if he didn't play f5 right away, I was going to put my queen here. But uh, actually, that's not a threat to take there, is it? It is not a threat. Because the knight defends it. I'm going to push that pawn and a fork here, so he'll probably put his rook here. What do I play then? Oh, he puts the queen there. That's effective too. This is still not hanging. How can I chase that knight? Hmm, not seeing it. Um, so I'm just uh, defending this temporarily, momentarily. That's clever. So I take the knight, he takes the rook. But on the other hand, I can take here, he takes there. I can check. Where is the king going? Guess that doesn't work. So I'll try this one. Now I am threatening to take the knight, either with the pawn or the rook. So he goes there, hitting the bishop. And uh, I can take here. can't take this pawn until he takes the bishop. Takes the bishop, I take. He takes the pawn, I take. He takes. I'll take this pawn. And, um, and this pawn is under attack. He can check and take this pawn. I guess he'll stay two pawns up, which is probably good enough for the win. But he didn't bother to do that. Okay. So I take this pawn. He's going to take back with check. Have a good way to threaten that queen. Let's threaten the knight anyway. I'm 
not yet threatening knight. I have to take this pawn first to threaten the knight, and then uh, and then he takes the check on. But now the knight is undefended, so let's see if uh, he comes up with a good check here. Ah, he's got a check with the um, with the knight here or here. So now, yeah, he can force an exchange of everything here. But uh, his pawn is hanging. Yep. <laughs> I'll wait and see if he wants to take back. He didn't ask for one. And he resigned, yeah. So let's look at this a little bit on the analysis board. I'm sure he meant to uh, play this move. It was just a mouse slip. I was planning to step up here. So if he goes for this pawn, I can take this one. And this should be a draw. Let's see, but he could try something else here. He could try checking me. See, there's another check here. He could try checking me like this. But now I'm threatening to take here with check and then take there. He could go here, check. Take, take. <clears throat> Might still be a draw because I have this passed pawn over here, but uh, black has winning chances, I would guess, here. Anyway, probably a draw. Is the proper outcome of that game here. Let's see if we can get another one. Get a rapid game. Here we go. Ebert, Ebert Meza, C4. <laughs> That's how I started my game in the previous game. So I play, I'm going to play my usual line. It's a symmetric English. Ah, he plays a Botvinnik setup. Maybe, maybe a Botvinnik setup. Okay, let's uh, bring the knight out first. I'm not quite sure. I mean, it's perfectly possible to just play symmetrically and put a pawn here. Um, excuse me. But it's also possible to play like this, I think, and aim for uh, d5. Uh, it might be good. If I want to play d5, it might be good to play it now, because at this moment he can't reply with e5. So, excuse me, when I go d5, he takes, I take, he takes, knight takes, knight takes, queen takes, and he's got this uh, d-pawn, which is isolated and, and pretty far back in his camp, so it's not weak, but uh, I have this pawn to hold it back with. Uh, what else is going on in that position? My king's a bit exposed. He has the queen coming out here with check. No, I still have the knight here. It's only this knight that got traded off. I think I will do this. I guess he doesn't have to keep taking. He can play the wait and see game here because I'm not really threatening to take here. I may be threatening to push. Maybe that's a useful move. <clears throat> so, but if I push, where is he going?
he's going to jump in here, putting more pressure, or here, putting more pressure on this knight. So first I, I unpin the knight, then he takes, and I take, that's all good. So I unpin the knight, he takes the knight, I take back, then he takes here and wins a pawn. So, okay, so that is bishop here, bishop here, bishop here. And knight or pawn, probably knight, knight to keep this structure good, knight here. But if he does, it takes with a knight, and my bishop here is looking at this pawn. Let's play it. And if he just takes the pawn right away, either way I can take back with the knight. Whether he takes with the pawn or his own knight. So if he wants to try and win a pawn, he has to take my knight now. But he'll leave me with the bishop pair and, and he doesn't win a pawn anyway because I get this one. But he will have an extra pawn in the center. But it is a backwards pawn. So, and my pieces are a bit scattered. So I think it's playable for white, but maybe not for an advantage. I don't like to trade excessively unless I see some kind of advantage. Okay, so now I think I should just push. Relieve this tension here that I'm feeling. Release the tension in the center. Strong players like to keep the tension. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I'm not the best. What can I say? So he did decide to give up his bishop anyway. Of course, this bishop is now not, not the world's greatest piece because it's looking at my own pawns. But it's a bishop. Okay, and he might choose to win it back right away. First, we defend this pawn. Well, actually, I could I could move this bishop back here and defend the pawn this way. And then I would keep the bishop here. And later I could look forward to kicking this knight with f5. But I think uh, castling is good here. Let's uh, not fall too far behind in development. I'm kind of one step behind here, which uh, is the kind of thing that happens if you're going for a material gain or something. I mean, a bishop pair is a kind of material gain. So, yeah, he brought his knight there. I guess he's looking to bring it here and double up on this pawn, but I think now is a good time to uh, kick that knight. Yeah, okay. So the danger would be this bishop coming here to here. That would be annoying. So let's get this bishop off the back rank. Hmm. If I put the bishop here and he puts a rook here and I retreat the bishop back here, then this is hanging. So let's do this. I, I want to keep this pawn defended and maybe put the bishop here. Okay. 
and he decided to open up his king side for me so mutual <laughs> mutually assured destruction kind of thing going on yeah so i can i can put my knight here I think I will. That bishop is a little too dangerous. So this gives up the bishop pair advantage, but um, solves my development problems, hopefully. Well, I'll still have to find a good use for this bishop if he takes this one. Maybe I'll end up trading it for a knight after all. <laughs> Irony. Let's see, but if he takes, I take back with the knight, and the knight can come forward here, defending this pawn. This pawn is kind of key. Keeps his knight out of this square. And, uh, and I really didn't want to allow his bishop to come in here. I've had... <laughs> bad things happen to me when things like that happen so okay so yeah I'm just gonna take I took with the knight okay now where is that knight the knight is coming into here so we'll bring the knight around what was I thinking I was thinking oh that's right I was thinking knight here to here to defend this pawn but I brought the knight here to control this square. Took with the pawn. Now that's interesting. So uh, this is under fire. This is isolated. Let's defend my pawn. And um, I'm going to lift my queen up, bring a rick over in front of that pawn. Is there a better square for my queen? Not sure. I guess technically it's not an isolated pawn because there's this uh, this pawn here, but um, it's isolated by the fact that I've stopped this pawn from coming forward to defend it. So it's kind of uh, artificially isolated, I've heard it called. Let's see. Um, he could put his queen here. This square is covered by my bishop. Let's step my king up. Give, him, give my rook some freedom to keep his queen out of that square. And um, if his knight comes here or here, I want to be able to take it. So I don't want the queen going here. I don't want a pin on that pawn. And I don't want the queen coming here on general principle. <laughs> could be Could be a problem for me. I don't want the queen coming here. So let's see, maybe he can lift a rook. Is it possible? Okay, push the pawn off for a queen trade. Maybe he's thinking. I'm going to bring this rook over anyway. <clears throat> ah, he's thinking. Push the pawn. Okay, let's dare him to push the pawn. Push that pawn, I dare you. <laughs> he 
he did it. So I was going to put my bishop here. That was my plan. The queen can't go anywhere along this row. And this diagonal is out, and this diagonal is out. So the queen will go here or here. If it goes here, I have bishop here. So it will go here. Two. F3. Then I'll attack this pawn. Maybe queen here to attack it. Yep. Um, other ideas here. There is check. King goes here, queen goes here, check, and that's mate. <laughs> right? If the king moves, I mean, the king doesn't have to move. But if the king doesn't move, then he's giving up the exchange. Check, king here or here, queen here, mate. Pretty straightforward. So bishop here check, rook takes, pawn takes, then it's his move. He could take here or push. Or I could take that pawn. Uh, I'm just trying to see if I have a tempo in there to get uh, get my queen in. I mean, my queen is on this diagonal, so if I could hop my queen out to this square where the knight is, where the bishop is now, that would be good. But if he, <clears throat> I take, he takes, I take, I have to get that rook. If he takes back with the queen, then the queen will be on this good diagonal. Um, if I try to block that diagonal by pushing this pawn forward, can take here with his knight with check. If I try to block the diagonal by pushing this pawn forward, he could take with the rook. I take queen takes, and then I could bring my queen over maybe. I think this is the correct move. We'll see if I can make it work in the game. Yeah, I recognize now I also have this square for my queen. So he took with the queen, keeping this defended. So if I put my queen here, what's he going to do? He could um, push that pawn with check or bring his queen in. How about if I put my queen over here? What's he going to do then? Um, I am threatening to push f4 when I with my queen here. Pawn to f4 would be a fork of the knight and the queen. Okay, and he can't bring his queen in to check me. The queen is on this diagonal. If the queen were on the light squares, it could come in here, it might be 
might be some danger there. So he goes there, okay. I was uh, thinking that was okay for me. Oh, maybe I should have done the fork anyway. Instead of taking back, well, I'm getting lower on time, so I had to, had to move a little more quickly there. So it puts the rook there. That stops the fork. But it allows this move. Or this move. I had to take that pawn in the center. That's, that's pretty good, isn't it? can't uh, defend it well, except by pushing this pawn but I can take that Okay, he's got four minutes left. He's got time to think. And certainly is a position where he needs to think. He's down the exchange. He has one pawn for it, but he's about to lose that pawn. And he's got, uh, I mean, my king position is weakened. So that's an issue too. But if I can exchange pieces off, I have a uh, winning end game. So he's got to proceed carefully. Maybe, you know, we can start doing crazy sacrifices. If he takes here with the knight, I'll probably take with the rook, just because um, it'll get more force off if he takes with the rook. So he did go that way, okay. Yep. Now this is pretty straightforward, I think. So I go here. He can trade or not. He can bring his rook in or not. I can block the checks with this rook. It's important not to allow this rook to be pinned. It's needed to defend the queen. And um, I can put my queen on this diagonal force an exchange there. This one, yeah. So if I take the uh, knight, let's think. I take the knight with my queen. Can't take with the rook. I could take with the pawn, but then his queen will come in with check. So I take the uh, knight with my queen. He takes this rook. So material is back to even, but it's my move. And I have the check here. Hmm. King goes here. I have the check here. His queen and his rook are there. Yeah, this kind of thing, sometimes it works. So I don't have to take, right? Go somewhere where there's no check. And I got a pawn and he got a pawn. So one, two, three, four, yet he still has one pawn for the exchange.
Hmm. Okay, just got to check here. I have a check here. He resigned. Okay. <laughs> here, let's, uh, let's take a look at this. Just a few moves in. Knight here, check. If I go here, and the knight can come here, and we'll start showing up these pawns over here, which might make it um, difficult to win. So after the knight check, I might just go here. be a long end game it's still his knight is guarding this square so my uh, rook can't come over and guard the natural way if i put my rook over here it's kind of out of play you know i'm not really taking advantage of the rook so probably i should go here he takes i take and then uh, take it from here try and use the advantage of the rook and uh, <laughs> try to either uh, get rid of the knight or uh, Make sure I keep at least one pawn. Could be a tricky endgame, but uh, anyway, my opponent didn't want to play it out, and I certainly have the advantage. So, uh, well, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed that, and I'll see you next time. Bye now.